in 2008, the issue was everybody got mortgages with low interest rates, right? But they got it with adjustable rate mortgages, which means that once they increase the rates again, then they're going to have higher home payments. Mm -hmm. So once they increase the rates again, they had higher home payments and a lot of people went under underwater, yep. right? There were 57% of home foreclosures just in January mm -hmm. of 2008, right? So it got real scary. The difference between that and now is the fact that everybody has equity as Nooski just highlighted. What up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Rookie Mondays. Today, we're back in the old school. We in the room that we all started at, bro. That's a fact. We Throwback. Been, we ain't been here in a minute, but we got to adjust something, bro. Everybody's trying to say that this housing market is just like 2008, mm -hmm. and I'm not too convinced about it, like at all. Yeah, right? there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on, a lot of fear mongering, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So we have some data here that might help to kill all that noise. Yep. So first of all, tell us how we got to this housing market in the first place. Yeah, so let's just talk about interest rates first, right? right. So, so when you look at it right now, the 30-year fixed mortgage for people who have good credit is about 7.5%. This is obviously much, much higher than what we previously saw that was as low as 3% to even 2.7, 2.8%. Now, why is this important? So let's talk about inflation for a quick second. Inflation news was reported at 8.2%. Now, this keeps on going around that 8 range, right? Yeah. This is important because the Fed wants to see that number go down. But when it goes up, the Fed says, yo, pause. We're actually going to increase our federal interest rate. Yeah. So they said that that rate could go as high as five percent that's not good news right because when we see that happen what that means is the mortgage rate is going to only go higher yeah. so let's just paint a picture of what that looks like let's just say that you made seventy one thousand dollars at an interest rate of 3.1 percent you could afford a home worth four hundred and forty eight thousand dollars back in january right but now fast forward the same salary but your mortgage rate now is seven percent you could only afford a home for $341,000. That's obviously a big drop. Huge and drop. that's why it's important to understand what interest rate and inflation can do when it comes to the housing market. Exactly. And that's how we got to where we are right now, right? Yep. So let's get into the numbers that we're dealing with right now yep. in this market. So the first thing to talk about is the median sales price of homes. That number is actually um, up year over year, 7.6%. Mm -hmm. Understand that. And then as far as homes being sold though, we're down 23% year over year. So what I see when I see that is like, everybody thinks that home prices are dropping severely, like, mm -hmm. oh, 2008, like understand that home prices are still up year over year. Yep. There's a difference between that and the monthly decrease that we see, right? Exactly, exactly. And, and when it comes to month decreases, it's not that reliable because that could be a uh, you know, a result of seasonality. Yeah. So I think it's very important to look at both pictures, right? So when you look at what you're saying is the price of a home is going up year over year, but yes, it was at about 7.6%. Analysts were coming around from Zillow saying that they were going to see 17%. Has that gone down? Yes. They're basically adjusting what they said earlier. So it's important to understand year over year difference and month over month. As you said, the month over month number, yeah, you're seeing that go down. So you could see that the trend is going downwards, but still, when you look at the overall picture, we're still seeing home prices go up, just not as fast as they were going up in 2020, which obviously makes sense because that was just a extremely weird time period. Yeah, literally, bro. You, you said it perfectly. Like, I want people to understand that. So mm -hmm. if you ain't understand that, re rewind and hit that again. <laughs> for real. Now, let's talk about some supply numbers, bro. Yep. Um, so the number of homes for sale is actually up 1% year over year. Not a crazy increase, but it has increased. So... All right. Now, the number of newly listed homes, though, is down almost 23 percent year over year. Mm -hmm. And for the days that these homes are staying on the market, that's up 13 days year over year. Yeah. 32 days on the market on average right now. Mm -hmm. All right. But as far as months of supply, we're still only at two months of supply. Yeah. Right? So that's low right now. It is. All it right? is. When you look at the historical data, that definitely makes a difference. Now, Obviously, supply matters, right? But now let's switch it over to the demand side of things as well. So you guys understand both side of things. Now the demand, the homes sold above list price is down 15% year over year. So why that matters, right? When you think about it, as a buyer, you have the power to negotiate now. That's something you have to understand, right? That's because home prices are seeing a drop right now of about 22.4%. 
So just think about that. Yeah, like home, homes with price drops. Oh, I'm sorry, homes with price drops are about 22.4%. So mm -hmm. once again, if as a buyer, you can go in there and negotiate because now it's not just, yo, I'm the seller, I could ask for $200,000. Right. That's not the case anymore. So when you paint a picture of what's really going on, you have to understand both supply and demand. Yeah, exactly. And so now that we got those numbers, it's like, let's talk about the comparison between that and 2008. Mm -hmm. because. One number you brought up was the fact that right now we have two months of supply, yep. which is a low supply, which shows you that who's in control when it comes to that. That means that sellers are severely in control. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when you talk about 2008, they had 10.3 months of supply, yeah. which showed that who's in control. That's the buyers were in control. Mm -hmm. right? So there's a huge difference as far as supply goes and supply directly impacts home prices as mm -hmm. we explained. I just, I just want to pause for one sec. Just make sure y'all got that point. He said 10 was in 2008 as a supply and now you're seeing two months. So just, just make sure y'all got that. It's, yeah, that's a, that's a huge point to highlight. Once again, rewind if you didn't hear that. Like that, that's a, people can't keep comparing to 2008 just because you see like real estate run up. It's the dynamics behind these numbers that is gonna make all the difference. Mm -hmm. All right, so another thing that's very different between this and 2008 is equity. Yep. Now, if you, you wanna go into equity? Yeah, yeah, I got you. So basically, we actually found some data, right? It says the average homeowner equity is more than 70% according to realtor com and although that's not an all-time high that's the highest level that we have seen in 30 years so that makes a difference and then core logic actually came out and said the report shows that u.s homeowners with mortgages saw equity increase of 27.8 percent year over year representing a collective gain of 3.6 trillion with a t for an average of $60,200 per borrower. Boom. So can we just explain what that means for just in case y'all didn't get it, can you explain that? Yes, bro, understand that everybody has equity in their home. So let's 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 really get into it because this is probably like the biggest point of the episode right here. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to understand. In 2008, the issue was everybody got mortgages with low interest rates, right? But they got it with adjustable rate mortgages, which means that once they increase the rates again, then they're gonna have higher home payments. Mm -hmm. So once they increased the rates again, they had higher home payments and a lot of people went under underwater, yep. right? There were 57% of home foreclosures just in January mm -hmm. of 2008, right? So it got real scary. The difference between that and now is the fact that everybody has equity as Newski just highlighted. So let's say that they increase the interest rates. And by the way, not everybody has adjustable rate mortgages in this time period. Yeah. That went crazy 2008. A lot of people have fixed mortgages, first of all. Mm -hmm. It's a different point. But even if you had an adjustable rate, if they were to increase the interest rate right now, a lot of people have equity that they could use to pay down their home yeah. to get out of that situation. In 2008, you didn't have no equity. Mm -hmm. You're trying to sell your home, but it, it costs way less than when you actually got it. Yeah. So it's slow for you. Now you're just underwater and you have to foreclose. That is not what's going on today because the banks are a lot smarter in their lending practices. Yeah. So essentially what we're really trying to say for you guys is yes, you have to be careful when you buy a home. Yes, you have to look at data and yes, home prices month over month are going down, but year over year, they're still okay, right? So rather than getting scared and not buying a home or rather than just sitting back, you probably want to look at some data. You probably want to see if you have enough money in the bank to buy a home and you want to take everything into consideration, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that was the main points we were trying to make. Nah, most definitely. Like, you know, if you're an investor, you know, rent is still a, a great place. You could get rental income. Like, make sure your numbers work for you. We're not saying like, go out and buy a home right now where the interest rates are crazy. Yeah. I mean, you might want to wait for them to come down if you're just a typical home buyer. But for investors, it's still a, a great opportunity for you. Overall, it's a numbers game as it always will be in real estate. It's a long-term game. Mm -hmm. Do your numbers and you'll be all right and follow back to it. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. So if you like this type of episode, obviously we brought it back. When we're in this room, we're talking about serious stuff. We're talking about data. That's why we want to bring it back to you guys. But as always, if you're still watching, thank you. We appreciate you. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Plus, hit that little notification bell because we drop two videos a week. And you don't want to miss them. Make sure you check out what we have on Wednesday because it's going to be a dope episode. But until then, peace. Peace. Soundstripe.